Welcome to our presentation on the open post motion offense and how to use it against a man and zone. Today we'll be teaching the tools and aspects of the open post to be able to run against both of those man to man and zone defenses. Also, I'd like to thank Coach Huggins and his staff at the University of West Virginia and the terrific job they do in respect to the open post motion offense. The advantages to the open post motion offense brings a lot to the table as in which to allowing your players to develop skills for basketball. The first thing is it promotes spacing for players to execute basketball movements in which your players are spaced from 15 to 17 feet away from each other in which we'll have a, a, a guard at the top or any player at the top, two wings and also two players in the corners and we're going to, I'll show you through uh, movements in which there are options which they can do within this offense but to execute basketball movements and also to allow players at number two to get better as the season progresses. When we put these players in these spots and go through these cuts, these different movements, these different motions, they're going to use their skill sets and what they do best to put themselves into this offense and be able to score at, at will. Number three, it isolates your best players in which, they can in which they can score in different positions. It isolates them in which they can take their players one-on-one. -on -one. It isolates them in the block or in the post position one-on-one. -on -one. It also isolates them into the high post areas uh, for one-on-one -on -one coverage. The fourth thing is it can be used against any defense. What we're going to show you is how we run the open post motion offense, not only against man-to-man -man defenses, but also zone defenses. It doesn't matter if it's a triangle and two, a box and one, a two-three zone, a one-three-one. It doesn't matter. All these rules and all these things that are incorporated with the open post motion offense can be used within that. And the last advantage to run the open post motion offense is offensive rebounding. With each of these players spread 15 to 17 feet and a shot goes up, either a long three or something from the mid-range or even in the block, as a shot goes up, a player that can get to a step early to the right or to the left of their, of their opponent has a definite advantage in running this offense to either get a piece of the basketball or actually get an offensive rebound and put it back in. Rules for the open post motion offense. We have for our players seven things that we want to get accomplished in executing this motion offense. Now the first thing is to notice is that it's, it's motion in which there has to be constant movement from the players and, them, and these players cannot just be standing in these spots. The first movement is whenever a player has the basketball and they make a pass, they're to make a hard straight line basket cut to the basket. They cannot widen off, they cannot make a moon cut or a half moon cut or a banana cut. It's got to be a straight line basket cut looking for the basketball with the hand extended out. The second one is in which the player is going to make a pass and then look to screen away. When they look to screen away, the player that's going to come off of this screen is going to be at an angle in which they're going to be attacking the basket. This is going to put a lot of pressure on the defense in which the defense is going to have to suck in to protect their goal and that screener can then come back to the basketball, square up and receive a really good look at a jump shot, a dribble penetration move, or also a uh, bounce pass inside to, their, to the player or their buddy that they just screened for that hooked as going to hook post. Our third rule in the open post motion offense is to pass and go to the basketball in which, they are in which the player is to make a pass and then either go to behind the player, go in front of the player, or receive the basketball for a jump shot. The player can also on that pass even set a ball screen. Each of these are effective movements in which to get a good scoring option and a good playmaking option with that, with that perimeter player. Fourth, receive a screen or set a screen on the perimeter in which the players are to, when they are coming on a basket cut or have come off already a, a screen from another player, they then can receive a screen or set a back screen in order to get themselves back out into the perimeter. These are very effective movements uh, when going against a man-to-man -man defense and also a zone defense. Five, at any time they can cut back door if they feel that they have an advantage. If they feel that their man is hugging them, even on the weak side of the ball, if they feel that that person is either trailing them or is hugging them, they can back cut into the basket. 
The biggest thing also is read the defense to if that player is then, if a player is denying me, if they're sagging off. Everybody at all times has to be reading to what the defense is doing to them. And the seventh thing is attack the basket and attack it with authority. With the open post motion offense, and what you can see here is we have our players set up in a 1-2-2 alignment in which we have a point guard or a guard at the top position, a perimeter spot, and a perimeter spot at, at around the arc of the three-point line, and then other players in the upper part in the corners. Now when we move to our zone offense, we'll move these players in order to fill in a short corner area as what I have marked here. But within these areas of the open post motion offense, the first thing is we want to be able to get movement with our players. As soon as the ball comes across half court, we do not want our players standing. The more they stand, the easier it are to guard. So we have players that need to start cutting. They start, need to start moving. In which, when the ball comes across half court, our players need to start making hard basket cuts. Here, and, or, and also come from different angles. And I'll show another cut here too. But at each of these spots, there is a fill marker here and also where these perimeter players are. Whenever a player vacates one of these fill spots, the other player is to come and fill from the top and read what the defense is doing to them, which we'll get to. Once this movement has, has created, there will be fillers coming to, these, coming to these areas and reading the defense, while these other two players have several options that can happen. The first option that can happen is when these players have filled these spots and they've made hard basket cuts, the players that have filled up in their areas can either receive the basketball or also, like I mentioned before, is they can also set down screens in which we can have a down screen set on this side, bringing this player to the block position, or we can have a back screen being set for this player here. This should allow us, either off the down screen or off a back screen, for our guard to be able to make an entry into either the right side or the left side of the, of the, of the offense. Now this is just random screening that can happen. Whenever our players set screens, they want to use communication or verbal communication and also the usage of a fist. And using the uh, a verbal communication and, and also the signal of a fist, they will be able to set down screens and even back screens for perimeter players in which they will be able to get into, this, get into this offense. Another entry that can happen is the players in the corner, again, using verbal communication can then set back screens or shuffle cuts for these players to come off of, and then they can then pop back and get into proper position in order to catch the basketball, and we can make an effective entry into our offense as so. But once the, once the basketball has been entered, either by these players cutting and having fillers, or even off, also by screening or setting back screens, there, as you can see, there's still a lot of movement. There's still a lot of uh, opportunities to score. But once a player has received the basketball, the first set that we're going to go over, our first series we're going to go over, is our cutting series. Now, in the cutting series, The basketball gets entered to a wing position. The point guard, or whoever is our guard at the top, has to read how his player is guarding him. If his, if his player is like any typical team that is a good, hard-nosed, man-to-man defender or defensive team, the defense then hops to the basketball, like correctly, and then denies with the hand in that passing lane. What can happen is, as the pass is made, this guard needs to take a step 
towards his defender if he has hopped to the basketball. The reason being that step is taken is if I take a step, that guy is then going to put weight on his leg, especially in front of him, and bounce and deny that basketball to back to the point guard. And then what we talked about, make a hard straight line cut to the basket. We do not want to make cuts that are going to the side. We do not want to make cuts that are going looped out to here or looped out to here, but we want straight line cuts to the basket. So that they would be, so this will put pressure on the defense and also allow for this cutter and this offensive player to be open in order to get the basketball. Now, as soon as he makes this cut, and as soon as what we talked about is with our filling up and usage of our motion cuts, there's a spot here which is known as either the sweet spot, the nail spot, or the read spot. With this movement, this player, this spot up here at the top needs to be filled. He needs somewhere to go to. This player then will come to this spot right here with his defensive player that should be off of the ball, if he's, guard, if he's using proper def defensive technique, should be off of the basketball and guarding him. Now as he's, gone to the, as he's gone to the middle, if the player has denied him the ball and it's not going to let him touch it at all, this player will then fill his spot, he will fill out, and then he will then make a hard, sharp, straight line cut to the basket. With this hard straight line cut, when he comes to it, he will then plant with his right foot. If he was coming from the other side, he would plant with his left foot and then explode off of his back leg looking for the basketball and looking for an entry to get the bas in, in order to get the basketball and score. Another option is when this player comes off of this cut to the middle and let's say he's, this guy's been beaten once or twice and he plays off of it, this player will then push off its left foot or if he's coming from the other side, push off his right foot and push right to the top in order to get the basketball, catch the ball, square up and score. Now as you can see within this, the basketball has now gotten to the middle of the floor and is ready to be reversed. Now with the ball being ready to be reversed to the back side, this player who made the cut fills to the corner, this player then is on the perimeter. Now at any time, our players are going to start reading their defenders. If he's being denied, he's going to immediately make a basket cut. No pass has to be made. He's immediately going to read it and cut. If he cuts, this man is going to come up and he's going to fill his spot and then we'll have movement like so as this. If the ball gets reversed as such, and comes back to the middle, we want movement on both sides. This man will then make a basket cut here. This man, as soon as this guy's made his cut, can then make a basket cut himself. This guy would then fill. He will then go here. And then this guy's filling up and then goes there. Now, as the ball, as the ball keeps moving and as also as players keep moving, the defense and all their fundamentals in which they teach a lot of good defensive teams are not going to be able to come off and quickly defend all these cuts in which somebody's going to either get backdoored. There's going to be passing lanes in which people are going to be able to make easier passes and also jump shots into the lane or layups in the lane and also dribble penetration. When the ball is passed to the corner, we need to make this guard, this or this post player or player, defensive player, guard him. And this defender, we don't want him in this lane clogging it. So we need to throw to the corner as much as possible. Now when the ball goes, enters into the corner, this guy here will then make a hard basket cut. This guy will then fill this perimeter spot. This guy will then fill this perimeter spot. He will fill this spot, and so on and so forth. Now as you can see through all these cuts and all this movement, if you're a dribble drive motion guy or know the concepts of the dribble drive motion offense, right here, is what is known as a single gap. Two gaps is what is known as a double gap. 
Now, as you saw in the rules, we want to get dribble penetration as much as possible. We need to get to the basket and score or get fouled. And in this 15, 17 feet spacing, we can do that. And also with this cutting movement. Whenever this player here vacates his spot, and this player is about to fill it and fill it hard, this opens up a double gap for dribble penetration to come into this lane in order to dribble penetrate and score. Let me draw a little bit better. Whenever there is dribble penetration into the lane, this guy dribble penetrates in, looking for it, looking to get fouled, looking to get the three-point play, looking to get a layup. Everybody else will come over and he will, he'll come over and freeze and has to basically be in a free stance in order to read what's going to happen. If their players come in and see that his man has been beaten, then he has dribble penetration and kick or dribble penetration and swing to the other side. But it causes a train, chain reaction. So in this basket cutting, if uh, it's not going to be open the first time, second time, third time, maybe not. But fourth or fifth time, you're going to see double gaps open up in the defense, especially if they're not really a good defensive and disciplined team, in which you're going to get a lot of dribble penetration within that. Another good thing about this offense and having the floor spread like we have it is, and you'll see more of this, and I'll go over more of it with the players out on the court, is the more cutting you, ha you do, the more chasing the defense does. If you're familiar with West Virginia and watching them play against uh, Duke two to three years ago in the national tournament, Duke is a heavily defensive team, denying lanes, pressuring the basketball. And in this offense, the way that West Virginia was cutting, they were moving, and even in our experience, the way in which they were cutting, in which players cut and move, they start then chasing off screens, which we'll get into, and chasing these cutters and not worrying about help side defense and allowing dribble penetration to get and getting in the gaps. Now another part is when passes are made, here, each of these players and what I've drawn is and drawn is they've moved up, moved up, moved up. The defense, if they're smart, are gonna keep reading that this player is gonna cut and cut off. And also, this guy is going to move there because my guy is going to move there. The defense goes there, and then the offensive player has to read it. If he sees this guy starting to cheat up at any time, this guy made a basket cut through, he can then cut right behind his defender and get a layup and score. Another option with the open post motion offense is when this pass is made here to the, to the wing, and I've shown you previously the guy hopped off and we've made basket cuts, is if this guy completely comes into the lane, you've made basket cut after basket cut, I'm tired of getting my face uh, cut in front of me, so I'm going to hop off and I'm going to use pressure. As soon as this player sees this, that his man has hopped off into the lane, he then takes a step to the left. The reason being he wants to take a step to the left it also in this cutting series, is he takes away vision. As soon as he makes this cut, he then takes a step to the left to get his defender to come to the left side more of where he's cutting, and then he's gonna make a basket cut right in front of his face in order to try and get an attempt in a layup. And like I said, here with the left hand, if he's a skilled left hand dribble penetrator, he can then get into the lane and get up to the basket and score on dribble penetration. Now with that cut, this guy has came into the lane. And as you know, within, the, within his cut, he can then receive a screen, especially a perimeter screen, from either a corner or he can then set a screen to either this corner here well, this guy comes up and fills, or he can come set another screen up here. As soon as this pass is made from a wing perimeter player to the top, 
a morphing effect happens in which with setting perimeter screens and receiving a perimeter screen, if you remember it needs a verbalization and also a fist up in the air, is this player can then come over and set a back screen or a flex cut screen for this player. When they come over and set this flex cut screen, this player can then pop out to the perimeter after rolling back and looking for the basketball and this player can then receive it or this player can then immediately duck back in, especially if it's one of your best post players, and receive a pass inside for a duck in. Now, on talking about the post with receiving the screen, at any time a player can make a cut to the basket. At any time a player can make a cut to the basket, we want to make a cut that is what is known as a violent cut. And a violent cut has, is a cut that has no regard for human salvation or human life. And what I mean by that is that we're not coming down and trying to be fit and trying to be a monster or being a rough player, but we're trying to be physical within the rules of the game of basketball. At any of these positions, either from the corner or from, the, or from the wings or the top. On any of their back cuts, these players have the option to be able to come into the lane very hard, spin and seal their player and seal their, their man. When the ball is passed, another really good option, especially with our, is with their corners. Is when the ball is here, or is here in the corner, and usually a lot of times your bigs do get to that corner spot and he makes his pass is since the only way that he, or the only movement he can make is to a basket cut and then back out because he really doesn't have anywhere else to fill and we'll get to the L cuts later is since that's the only place that he can fill to when he makes his hard basket cut here and it can only fill out this is a great opportunity in which he can post post up into this lane and be able to establish position. So with the usage of this basket cut here, and he's going to make a hard, violent cut, he can then wheel into the lane, which I'll show on the floor, wheel into the lane, set his man up, or set his man up, wheel into the lane, and receive a post entry here, and he's completely isolated on that side. The second part is a pass and screen away. When we set a screen or we look to screen away, the first thing is, again, usage of the fist and also of our um, verbal college. We set a screen in which our tail is facing to where we want this guy going to. And nine, nine times out of ten, we want this guy going to the basket because, as we stated, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. When a pass is made to, to a perimeter spot and we go to screen away, this player then is going to then set his man up or close the distance of space. When he closed the distance of space, he's going to get right next to his man so this guy has an easier guy to go and screen. When he goes and gets this guy to screen, he's then going to either back cut off of him if his defender is playing to the top or he feels pressure to the top or if he's feeling pressure toward the, towards the bottom, he's then going to then curl into the lane. Now once he's curled into the lane and the screen has been set, He's curled into the lane and the screen has been set here. He goes off of it. This player will immediately turn his back and seal a person at the switch or seal somebody and come back looking for the basketball. Now the other rules still apply. He can then set a back screen and get out of the perimeter or he can receive a down screen from another player. Now once these players have then, once he's now set this screen, the option as what we were talking about as the, as the rules is if he rolls back to the basketball, and this guy has just came to the basket, he can then come off of this cut and violently establish post position. This player then can receive back to the guy who just screened and we now have a high-low option in which if that's a really good post player, we brought him off the screen. Now his player that is guarding him 
is now below him, he can then score. Or this guy can pull up one dribble. Or if his defender had to help out on this, he's going to be coming to the top. And with him coming to the top, the law of physics is he's going this way, you're going this way, you're either going to get a foul or you're going to be in a two-on-one situation with a guy that you just screened. Everybody else just fills up. Now this is just one scenario that could happen within this offense. And do remember, you want to keep your screening tight when coming off these screens. If the ball's passed to the corner, we'll go to the left side here, is this man receives the basketball, he then passes to the corner. He will then, this player will then come in, get his tail as close to the basket as possible or in an angle, and then this man will then come off of the screen either to the back side or to the front side depending on how his defender's reading it and also playing it, which we'll go over on the court. With that pass and with that screen, our another scenario is this player will then make his pass. Now as you know, he doesn't really have anywhere to go to. He will then run an immediate L cut, which we'll talk about, and screen for this player, whoever this is, and set a useless screen or in the California or a smash cut, in which he'll set a screen here in order to receive a pass. And then this man will then roll back to the basketball. So he either has this cut, this option here to the middle, or this option to this player cutting back to the basketball. Now with both of these cuts happening and all this screening happening, the back side still has rules. The back side can still receive a screen or screen for each other in which they let this first part, uh, part of the screen happen. So let's say the ball is here. This guy comes in, sets his screen, pops out, and then a lot of things can happen here. A back screen can be set with verbal college, college in which they call it out. Or also a basket cut or a hard violent cut can be set in which he makes a hard cut, dives to that block. This man comes up, as soon as the ball gets reversed, we now have a post position in which he's going to be able to get the, get the ball and score. Now with the open post motion offense and screening away, all these different options come and take place in which there's a variation in your cutting and in your screening. This off offense is a, is a freelance option or offense in which you have passing, which we just went over, and now we're starting to screen away. Then we're receiving perimeter screens. Then we're making violent cuts into the post. Then we're making L, L cuts, which I'm going to go over here in a, little, in a second. But there's all these options that are taking place within three, four, five passes. And then we might have a flex cut on the baseline. You can see now, now that we've built from the, from the cutting series to the screening series, this motion offense has really taken part and has started to really start to come together and being an effective, well-oiled machine. Now with, that, now with that, in the screening series, we've talked about dribble penetration, we've talked about post-ups. Now what we can do is we can isolate and get a screen to screen for our best shooter is a ball gets passed, this guy makes a basket cut, and then looks to set a screen. He will then set a flex screen. This guy will come off this flex screen. This player then angles, because he can, as one of our rules, get to the perimeter and set a screen. He'll then can come up and come off a flex screen. As you can see, we just came in with a screen the screener flex action for a really good shooter. Let's say the game's tied, games, we're down one, two, three points. That's a good way to get a look at the basket, and especially at a three-point shot. So we want a lot of our post players coming off of screens, our players that are good around the basket, we want them coming off these screens while the people that we want shooting the basketball setting the screen. Because as we know, if you set the screen nine times out of 10, you're gonna be the guy that's gonna be open. Our third option is our go to the ball options, in which whenever a pass is made to a wing spot, and as you note, this pass can be made to the, to the right side of the floor, to the left side of the floor, but whenever this pass is made to either the right or left side of the floor, 
This player then takes his man away and then goes to the basketball. This player here has to run what is known as an L-cut, and we'll get to his options later. But in running this L-cut and getting to the high post, this now clears this side for any involvement of any a two-man game or a three-man game with that man who just cut to the corner. When the ball is passed to this perimeter spot and our man has made the L cut to the top, has made his L cut to the top, a lot of good things can happen. The first one is, as my defender comes over with the top guard here, this player will then, can first option is can just run a little hand back for a jump shot. If this, if this point guard player or whoever that top player is, let's say we run some cuts, get some screens going, he then passes, that guy reads, goes to the L cut, and then he comes and gets a pass behind, that can be an effective jump shot from this, top, from this spot in order to get a good screen. This guy goes underneath of it here, his defender's here, he's now open to take a jump shot. The second movement that can happen is in leaving this guy to make the L cut here to the top. He then gets, receives the pass and receives the basketball. Our second option that can happen is the guy goes underneath, jump shot. The next one is if he goes underneath and there's no jump shot, let's say he's too far out to take the jump shot that's within his range. There's two players now, defensive players, that are ready to either jump at the side of the ball or jump at the next dribble, penet dribble penetration. If this guy jumps out and shows pressure, because he thinks that his guy's just gonna get it and he drive to the right off of this, this guy here needs to dribble off and away and attack this player here. While this player seals his man and then goes and, and attacks the basket, with the screen and roll. So let me get to that option again. He then rolls, taking this guy to the basket here. Here's dribble penetration. Now as this is going on, this man will then fill out to even give these guys even more spacing within this movement. The same thing can happen Whenever the basketball is here, the basketball is here, and the defense, this guy then jumps. He then will attack this man to the baseline, and then this man here will, will screen his man or seal him off, and then roll, and we have either a layup or a isolation post up inside. And again, this man will then just fill out. If that, if that calls for that. Another part of going to the ball. Man runs the L cut. Defenders are playing, are now playing tight. We just ran this option, he's hit a jump shot. Maybe he's hit two jump shots. Maybe we've gotten an isolation in the post. This man will then come, and instead of receiving a hand back, this defender wants to kind of jam him up, and we'll show more of this on the floor. Wants to jam his up, show his hands to the official, and jam him up. And in jamming him up, he will then loop around, and this man will get hung up on the back, because this player will then use a reverse pivot in order to hand off the ball, and take his man out and open him up for a layup. Now, in opening him up for the layup, another option could come off of that. If that opens him up for that layup, this man has the basketball, this guy comes off of it. They might, on this handoff, this guy might come off and switch. With this guy having, being hung up on his back, the basketball is then passed, or is, hand, is handed off to a flip back to the back. He then goes off of it, and then this man will then seal him. He's got him on the back, and now we have an isolation for a post up and or a score. Another option in which the go to the basket or go to the ball movements is we have the L cut. The pass is then made. 
when the pass is made, let's say this is a player, and as I said, screening motion, cutting motion, now we run this. The player is then sagged off of the off of his defender, or of the offensive man. This guy can now use it to his advantage. Usually in other offenses, this is a disadvantage. But what he can do now is he can then make a V cut and then come inside the lane and receive a handoff and go right through this gap. What this causes is this guy to run into him and his to, into his defender using him as a screen and enable that to, have, to become a layup. Also, if this is also available and this guy switches off, this guy can then roll completely to the basket looking to score off a layup. And these go to the ball moves off this L cut. Another entry that we can do is if he sagged off and here's our cut and he doesn't receive this handoff, this man can then wheel and set a trapdoor ball screen on this man, on his, uh, got the man who he just passed the ball to, his teammate, and then he can then drive to the basket and even look to score. Within the, these next cuts is the usage of the ball screen. Now if this man comes up and tries to and run his L cut, he's going to kind of get in the way of this ball screen. But his read is, once this guard starts to make motion here, he's to come up. But once he sees that this is actually going to be a ball screen, there's two things that he can do with that. And I'll show you the, uh, the other ones more on the floor. But is he's to go back to the corner in which he's going to be filling up because here comes our ball screen right here. With this ball screen being set on this player, he then will read it by dipping his man to the right side and then coming off of it hard. And then this guy will then roll. Now on this roll, this guy will then fill that spot up. This is another option that can happen in which also this player can then post up. Now our last movement that I'll show you here on the board is our fourth movement and that's the usage of the L cut. Now once we've gone through these L cuts, I'll then take them, take all these movements and all these tools and we're going to go over them on the floor and I'm going to show you how to run them against multiple, zone, multiple defenses, normally zones. As soon as the pass is made here, at any time out of these corners, an L cut can be ran. With this L cut being ran here, their first stop that they want to stop in is the block or the, po the established post position. As the, balls, as the pass is made to the perimeter, they can then stop there and then completely bust their tail to get up to this perimeter spot. Once they get up to this perimeter spot, a lot of options can then happen. This man can come off of the screen, a UCLA screen, because remember, if you're in the lane, you can set a screen or receive a screen. Once that screen's set, we can then have this as an entry to the top. Now, as I stated, weak side, what's happening? A lot of times, if they're playing correct, correct defense, this man will be in help side. This man will be in help side to help on any dribble penetration. That is great because we can use this against anything that we want. If this is a good post player right here, he can signal that we need to make a skip pass in which he can come into the lane and wheel hook and we can make an entry here or we make an entry to the wing into the post. So we can do either one of those options out of this. But with the usage of these L cuts, we want to be able to play basketball. We want to be able to play making cuts. Making cuts in which we're going to cut into the heart of the defense. This high spot here is a very good spot in order, the in order to get the basketball. Once the L cuts are made, it can be made by any player. Once the L cuts are made, the ball can be entered. You can drive one on one or you can enter and then scissors actions can then come off of it and then a screen can be set for one of those players to come off of it. Also, in communication, A weak side L cut, like I've drawn here, a weak side L cut can then happen at any time once the ball, once it's been called. 
Pass is made. We might be able to get a weak side. X off the shuffle cut here. Now what we've done is, I've just gone through the basics of this offense in which there's a lot of cutting, screening, and movement. What we're going to show you on the floor is a more of a dynamiter in which you're going to see the whole offense engulfed in, in how the cutting and screening and how the defense is going to react to it. How we can get players the basketball in different areas such as these L cut spots either here on the perimeter or also here are also on the perimeters here, here, and our post players on the blocks here and here. Now within this offense, we've, we're going to be able to accomplish these different things. On the floor, you're going to see things a lot more detailed. You're going to see a lot more things that you can do within that offense. Passing and screening, passing and setting a ball screen, passing and receiving a handoff, passing and making straight line cuts, hook posts. It's good to see things from a written aspect and drawing aspect, but also from an aspect of players actually running the offense. Out here on the floor, we have five guys that are positioned in a 1 2 2 set in which they are exactly spread out 15 to 17 feet. Now, as you notice on the floor, all these guys are standing by, by an X. You have X's on the, on the perimeters. We also have X's at the high post, the low post, and also our fill spot, what we talked about on the, on the smart board. And also we have an X here because this is a place I'll show you with our post players in which we want to get them right to. Now the first part of the offense is we don't want any standing around like we mentioned in, in the rules is it's a motion offense and motion offense is movement, motion offense is hard work. And with, with this we want our point guard, Mr. Elam, we want our point guard to be able to come down the lane and be able to find an easy option. Now if I, as a point guard comes down, as you can see, if these guys are standing, they're easy to guard. And with all these guys standing, <laughs> easy to guard, we want them cutting. Now the first part to getting open in this offense is they can, is these guys on the perimeter, where John and Clayton are, is they can make cuts away from the basketball. So they're going to, they're going to set their man, men up by using a jab step, is what Clayton is here, using a jab step, actually go the other way big boy, you just take your left foot, jab step and make a hard basket cut, straight line, right here to the basket and stick his head under the basket. This guy here, Mr. Cornish, will then come and will then fill up to this spot here. And they'll fill hard. Same thing with John, a guy away from the ball, he'll then come and fill, or go, we'll make a hard cut. Clayton, you'll then fill to that spot. When cutters cut to the basket, they will then fill their spots on the perimeter. Now as you can see, this costs a little bit of movement. This is a way, one way to get the, get the basketball in this offense. A second one, dribble comes down from the point guard. Our guys in our corners can run what are known as L cuts, in which is this Clayton here, he's going to run an L cut, and if a team is sagging off of, Clay, of Greg, we can then come off here using a verbal, go ahead, I'm sorry Greg, go back, using a verbal and also a um, visual of setting a screen. Screen Greg, screen Greg. He'll then set his man up. Then after he sets him up, he's then going to go and look for that cut. That action could be happening over here. Gary Stiles could be making a basket cut, which is perfectly fine. And then one thing that you can do out of this is when you make a, pa or make a cut and you're in the lane, you can either set a screen or set a back screen in Gary's, Gary's case being under the basket and also receive a screen. So with Gary being as big as he is, he's going to use his, his body, his wide body, to set a back screen or a flex cut for John Lewis. So here he comes, using a visual and also a verbal. John, John, good, he's coming off of that. Gary can now, using regular basketball techniques, he sets the back screen here. He then rolls back and see if he can get his guy on his tail. If not, Gary can then fill this spot here and receive the pass, or John can then, then John will fill there. So you see we've had a back screen here, we just had, we, as soon as that action happened, we also have a reflex screen here. And the next thing, as what I was talking about was receiving a screen, is let's say Gary's a shooter, dead eye shooter, he makes a basket cut, he then sticks his head under the basket, John Lewis can then run a little in screen, Gary, Gary, right here, and Danny can bring it over that way. 
So that's one way in which you can get the basketball into the open post motion offense. It's one way you can do it with a lot of basket cuts, either basket cuts, simple basket cuts, simple flex screens, down screens, and also uh, L cut screens, which we'll get to L cuts here. Why don't you guys go ahead and run through that. Do any one of those combinations of things. As he dribbles down, we get a basket cuts, good. We have movement. Gary can, set, Gary can set a back screen, look for it, and now it fills out, good. We got a ball screen here, which is perfectly fine. Okay, we got a flex, we got a basket cut, you fill, pops out, make a basket cut. We haven't gone through those things yet, which is perfectly fine. I'm just trying to get, so you guys can get an idea of these guys and how they run into, how they can get into this motion offense. Good, we got a flex screen there, hard cut, good job. Okay, Danny, go ahead and bring it back to the top. Thank you, guys. Okay, what we just showed you is just some easy ways to get into, to get into that motion. And through drill work, you'll be able to get through that um, within your practices. Now, the first thing we're going to get through is what some of these guys were just doing is we're going to start out with our cutting series. Our cutting series is a technique in which we're going to make straight line basket cuts to the basket. We don't want any moon cuts or banana cuts. We want to go straight line to the basket. Can I please get a defender up top? Mr. Dusty Watson, excellent defender for us here. Now, one of the reads, this is also a read that's going to come from that perimeter spot, also from John's corner spot, Greg's spot, and also Clayton's spot, is the read of the defense. Now, as you know, rule, one of our rules was read the defense, read the defense, read the defense. Where is he playing you at? Now, nine times out of ten, if Danny Elm has the basketball here, and here's, he's got his point guard gardening, We'll go to the left side here, but it can also, this is symmetrical, so we can go to the left side or the right side. So in the flow of the, of the motion, if I make a pass here, Dusty Watson, if he's using correct defensive technique, he has hopped to the basketball like he was taught here, hopped to the basketball and is in help side from the, is in help side. So right here, Dusty. He now has either, he can then play either Dick Bennett style and sag completely into help, which is right here, and still see ball you man and or he can come up and deny this wing. If he denies this wing, my technique that I want to use, because a lot of guys are like, coach, I back screen, or coach, I cut, coach, I cut, but they don't use correct technique to make themselves open, is I want to try and get the weight on Dusty Watson's leg right here in his denial. I want to get his full-fledged weight on that side. So after I made my pass, he hops the basketball. I then want to take a step here as if, as if he can, he can uh, deny me this pass. Then I wanted, after that step, I would then want to take this leg and I want to explode and make a hard basket cut right straight to the basket. So made a pass, Dusty hopped off. Actually, Dusty, let's go back here, rewind. Is he's got it here, we're in motion. Boom, he hops off. I get here, boom. I then want to make a straight line cut to the basket, as I as showed. Also, you need to be a receiver as a cutter. So he made the pass, stepped, got his weight, boom. I want to show my hand here so I can let Gary know, hey Gary, I want this basketball. A lot of guys when they cut, they just want to put their head down and just kind of, just not be an option. With this, we want to make a hard cut, boom, and show our hand that we want the basketball here. Let's say, does he's been beat on a couple cuts? He's been beat, boom, back cut, back cut. His coach is getting after him, yelling at him, all that, don't get back cut. No problem, coach. So the pass is made. Instead of Dusty making a hop off and being in denial up here, he then kind of hops off a little bit and goes straight back. Ask yourself how many times on film you've seen this with your, def with your defenders. Danny then reads this. He sees that Dusty's kind of hopped off back, say about right there because he's tired of me basket cutting and, and burning his face. Now I'm going to burn him the other way. Is I want to try and get him to lean this way a little bit, and then I'm going to cut right in front of his face, again, looking for the basketball with the hand up, target hand. Same thing over here. If I'm guarding Gary, he makes the pass to John. I hop back. He's going to take a step here to get me kind of leaning that way. He's going to cut across my face, and now he's in the lane. Now with the cutting series, thank you Dusty, you can kind of step off now. Now that you've seen some reads with some cuts, now you've seen some reads with some movement, the fill spots, as you guys can see here on the perimeter. Danny makes a pass, he's then going to set his guy up, 
and then he's going to basket cut hard. Now what we have here is an X that is right here at the free throw line. This is what is known as the sweet spot, nail spot, fill spot. A direct line from Clayton to Gary right here, the reason this spot is so important is this is an easy read for Gary, is in which if I'm guarding Clayton Strunk and the ball's passed, I should be in help side here. If, as soon as Clayton comes across, and if I want to deny Clayton Strunk the basketball and I deny him, he will then take a, his step with his left foot because he wants, men, remember, wants to get the weight on this right foot here, deny, he will then make a hard basket cut looking for the ball. Now the one thing is, if you do not get this basketball here in, underneath where Clayton is, let's say I'm able to catch up to him, Clayton never, or any cutter, never wants to take their eye off the basketball. There could be a two-on-one situation. There could be a jump shot from there, and he, don't, he wants to have the potential to get the offensive rebound. Instead of cutting, and then what a lot of guys like to do is just put their head, under the, put their head underneath and then go fill out. So what he needs to do is cut here, and then open up completely, so put his back to the, to the sideline, and look, and look for a second, and then fill. Greg Cornish, as he comes across, I'll show the second part of this, is I'm going to lay off of Greg. He's big, he's tall, he might be able to make a cut to the basket. He then has to fill this top spot. So he then pops to the top, pass there, good, good. Now Gary's made a pass, he's going to basket cut. John will then fill up hard here, good, Gary fills out. Good. Pass. Boom. Left hand. John's going to come fill this spot here. There's a straight line. It's an easy read. He plays below. Pop to the top. John. Okay. Step. Step toward him. Boom. Bust. Bust. Good. Bust. Good. He comes to the top. Boom. He's going to wipe his nose. Remember all your basketball fundamentals. When you catch, you want to catch and sweep. Sweep the floor. Good. Good. He makes a hard cut. Nice job. Good. Deny. Deny. All right. He's able to catch it. That's fine. Okay, reverse it, Greg. Reverse it, Greg. Good. Make it hard cut. Hard cuts. Hard cuts. Straight line at the basket. Straight line at the basket. Good. 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 Fill. Good. And stop. Good job. He got denied. Good job. Now Greg fills the spots, so on and so forth. Good job, guys. Good job. Okay, that is the cutting series. Now, what you're going to see is, and what happens, let's say Greg Cornish makes a cut and Gary's got the basketball. For those guys that are dribble drive motion offense guys, Greg makes a hard basket cut. What he has done now, good job Greg, what Greg has done now is he has opened up, if you're a dribble drive and you know some terminology with that, this is what is known as a double lane. This is what is known as a single lane. You want to be able to attack these double lanes because the next help defender is right here guarding Clayton. He might be right here. He might be, maybe Clayton's a major shooter, he might be here. So since those things are happening, this guy's coming over, you might have dribble penetration to beat your guy with your right hand. Right in the lane, might be able to draw a foul. Another thing is that might happen is Greg fills and so on and so forth. We might have a shooter here, you might be able to dribble, kick, pitch out, Danny's open for a three ball, we win. Okay? Does everybody see that? Now, can I please get two defenders? Just two, just two. Tony, can you guard Clayton? And Dusty, can you guard Danny? Now, what you saw is within this motion, guys are passing and, go ahead and make a basket cut, Gary. Gary makes his basket cut, John fills. Now, if I'm defending this, and if I'm smart, I'm gonna be seeing the same movement every time. They're coming up, they're going up, they're going up. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to start cheating up because what I might be able to do is I might be able to, Greg might, you know, might not be too good with the basketball, they might mess up, I might be able to get a steal and a layup or a dunk. So one thing these guys get to do is, and on the backside at all times, they must be constantly looking at their man and reading it because we just don't want to be a one-dimensional team that keeps filling up, filling up, and filling up, all right? So what's going to happen is this. John Lewis gets the basketball. Greg Cornish makes a basket cut. Now, Tony's been guarding Clayton three, four, five, six, six passes. Let's say Tony starts cheating up. Danny, go ahead and fill. Greg starts, he starts cheating up. 
immediately what Clayton Strunk can do, let me take Clayton's spot here, is Tony's guarding me, the pass is made there, he immediately reads, hey, here he comes, what do I have open right here? I have a backdoor layup completely wide open that he, can't, that he cannot do anything. We encourage a lot and basically a ton of back cuts from the weak side because they're very hard to defend. Let's say Tony Phillips, pass is made, he's guarding me, he reads it, and let's say he stays right with me. As you can see, I can kind of get behind him. He doesn't have eyes behind his head. So I can get behind him and maybe even get a circle post up right here in the lane on the other side at this X, ball, right here. I might be able to get a circle post up. Let's say in Danny Phil's, excellent. Let's say if Tony thinks I'm going here, I basket cut, and let's say he's able to retreat back to here. What we'll get into later is, he's able to just, because I beat him with a post up here on my top side, he now cuts here, I now can take him and come up here to the side post. And we'll talk about the options from the high post right here. If you are familiar with the Los Angeles Lakers and how Kobe Bryant scores, he scores from the perimeter, he scores from the block, he'll also score from the high post, the side post. Does everybody see that? So what we're going to do is, Danny to the top, thank you. We're going to run pass and cut. You, defenders can step off, thank you. Actually, I'll use DWA here in a second. Defenders, I want you guys to make three passes and then somebody cut from the back side looking for, and just get the ball for a layup. All right, go ahead, just three passes. One, everybody fill hard. Make sure you hit our sweet spot. Two, okay, right there, there there's three. Okay, weak side, weak side, you're fine, weak side. Cut Gary, cut Gary. Okay, Danny, you're there, we're playing, you're right there. Good job, good job. Finish, 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 good job. Good job. So we had a weak, we just had a weak side cut from that side. Now, getting back to Dusty and Gary, perfect matchup, perfect matchup. Let's say they start getting smart too and their coach starts getting smart. Hey, go in the middle and start clogging up the lane. Go in the middle and start taking these things away like Dusty's doing. I'm telling you, if they're going to play oversized help like this, it is a perfect time to get a post up. Let's say Danny, go ahead and make a pass to John. He starts making this pass to John. You make your basket cut. That's perfectly fine. Greg goes and fills there. Danny comes out. Now what can happen is this. I can then come up and make a little bit of what is known as a violent cut. I want to make a violent cut. When you think violent, when you think aggressive, okay, aggressive, I'm being aggressive. But violent is a step up from aggressive. So when I make this cut, he's going to stay right here in the lane. Go ahead and pass right there. Instead of me just coming up here and filling this, I'm going to immediately, with no concern for human life, come right at him, turn, I'm going to make a hit, not showing my hands to the official, not shoving. I'm going to turn, take my foot, split his legs, and come right here, and I'm going to seal and try and get the basketball inside. That is known as a violent cut. Anytime a post player, Greg Cornish being one of those guys, Clayton being one of those guys, even our guards, Danny's a bigger size guard, anytime they can get a post up, we call this a violent cut. So anytime we can get a backside, if he's going to stay right there, he can get a post up there, or Dusty, actually Dusty guard me at the top, or if we get a cut here, so it says he's here, Dusty takes me away, I get him a step here, go ahead and fill Gary here, go ahead and guard me Dusty, right there, go ahead and get to the top. We're now in a high-low situation in which I've gotten a piece of the paint right here. I can make a pretty good move from right here and I'm probably going to draw a foul, especially if I'm shifting good with my moves. Also, another thing, and a couple ways to get into the high post and low post spots is we'll run what is known as an L cut. An L cut can stop at different ways. If I can get Greg here, if I can take Greg's spot. Any time that I want to get into the block, I can do so by, make, by taking my guy in. Actually, Greg, go ahead and guard me. Okay, if Greg Cornish is in proper defensive position, he's on line-up line, that's perfect. If he guards me this way and stays up, I might be able to seal him at any time that I want and get a lob right here. Now let's say if Greg Cornish plays below me. He plays below me, I'm going to take a step away to take away his vision, and I might be able to take a step and put, him, put my foot right here and be able to get an isolation post up here, or if he's able to take that away, Going to get to the top there, I'll point here, boom, catch and score. 
So we have those options out of that. So that's the first part of the L cut. The second part of the L cut is what we or is what we call or what we call blast to the high post or also the pinch post, in which I get here. Go ahead and guard me again, Greg. Remember, at any time I can do that post movement, in which I would beat my guy. Now, if he's getting me here, I can then call L cut, L cut, boom, and we can run an option here. One of those options could be what these guys just did. I looked for a back door, got him with the handoff. I've gotten a piece of his guy. Now I'm rolling. Another way in order to get into the L cut or into the high post position is let's say one of these wings. Let's say Danny might have somebody small on him that he feels that, you know, I, can, I might be able to take this guy right from here and get into the basket. That's perfectly fine. Anytime we can do this, Danny gets right here. He then sits right on this guy, this defender. He might be defending him. Greg goes there. We are now in a three-man game isolation right here. Go ahead and head back, guys. Another way in which to use the pinch post position is Greg comes up here, goes ahead and he tries to get a post up here if it doesn't happen. He then runs, runs again, L cut, L cut, L cut, right here. Now Greg Cornish is right in here in this L cut spot also. Let's say we have a post player, we want to go high low. Greg, go ahead and head back here. Gary's right there. If Greg wants to, this is also good against a man, good against zone, is Greg comes across and he gets right here to the post. But he wants to try and work to get himself open. Come here, Gary. He calls Gary's name. Gary, 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 screen, 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 right here. Gary might have the opportunity to post up. He can then come up here to the high post, which is perfectly fine, and run three out, two in. As soon as he passes, what can you do? Pass and you probably can't make a basket cut because we're in the lane. So you can have pass and screen away or pass to go to the ball. And we might have an isolation right here. Greg, you're me. Greg's me. He came off that screen right here because he's communicating with his corner buddy. So Greg, might, Greg comes in. Screen, 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 Gary, screen, Gary. Boom. And goes to the top where you have a high-low. That's great against the middle guy of a 2-3 zone and also all, all other zones. Okay, John comes back. Okay, another thing is with the L cuts, is off a down screen. Let's say we dribble at, dribble at Danny to get in this. Danny goes back door, which we'll get into. Greg runs a down screen, go ahead and pop out. Good. Now Greg can either post here or he can come right here to the L cut spot right here. Let's say if he hits Danny, go ahead hit Danny in the corner, he can then now screen. Shuffle, shuffle, boom, right off of that spot, right for that lane. Very good. Another great, another great way. Let's say John is bringing the basketball up the floor and he is heavily pressured. There's a guy on him. He's basically nose to nose with John, can keep up with John's quickness. Go ahead and bring the ball up the floor, John. He's nose to nose with him. We can't really get in our offense too well. A great way to get him off of there is to set a high ball screen. So I L cut, John, John, bam. And I get that guy immediately off my point guard and we can now get into the offense. Now we've gone through what is known as the cutting series. And like I said, I've had a lot of coaches, well, how, you know, you open the floor so much, well, how do you get post-ups? That was just one of the ways, out of the many ways to do it. Our second option is a pass and screen away. When we pass the basketball, Gary's going to make a pass to Greg Cornish. Can I please get two defenders out here? Very nice, very nice. Tony, if you can guard John. Dusty's on Gary. That major matchup of our bigs. Gary has now made a pass. And in this offense, you can either pass and cut like we just did. Pass and our second one is going to be screen away. Now both these defenders are in correct defensive position. Our pass is made. We are then going to set a screen. Our first thing is we need to let our guy know we're going to set this screen. So we want to give a verbal and also a, a verbal and also a physical signal that we're setting a screen for John. So go ahead and set that, Gary. Screen, screen. Now on our screens, we want to angle ourselves because Gary's backside is going to basically point John to where he's going to go. We don't want John to go up to up and away. We want John at the basket. So Gary's now going to angle his screen so his backside is at the basket. 
John will then, as soon as he saw Gary, give him a verbal and also a physical signal, will then take a step towards his man and do what is known as close the distance. Now in closing the distance, this will, if Tony can guard me for a second, closing the distance allows me to kind of keep this guy here without holding his jersey, in which I take a step here, ball's there, and now Tony's playing me to the bottom side of the screen. I want to then take Gary's shorts or the top of his jersey or just his side and I want to keep all distance and all space between us right here and go right to the basketball. Now as you can see Tony Phillips is on my back, I can now score the basket. Once the guy sets the screen, Gary's now set his screen, John has gone off of it, he's played to the top so you want to curl right around it. Now as soon as this happens, Gary will then look to put a guy on his back and now he's going to come looking for the basketball. If you have shooters in your program, guys that can really fill it up, you want them doing this because I want to show you what Dusty Watson is going to do defensively. I'm going to be Dusty for a second. As Gary goes, he makes a pass, he's going to set the screen. Now he's guarding Clayton, that's fine. Clayton's going to come off of this. He's got to hedge, he's got to help a little bit. He might have to sink in a little more because Tony's on the top side, as you can see this. With Tony on the top side, Gary's right there, jump shot, shot! Now he's open. Or he might have a dribble penetration in over there. Second thing off the screen. Gary goes, and that's, he sets the screen. All right, sets the screen. All right, I'm defending him. The next thing that can happen is Gary pops to the top, Clayton then fills, John then goes out there, passes mate to the top. Now as you can see, I've got to make an attacking closeout at Gary. So I've got to be able to chop my feet, give high hands, and be able to take away a jump shot. Let's say he's burned me one time on a jump shot, three ball right from there, stuck it in my eye. Now he comes at me, I didn't dribble penetrate, or I'm sorry, close out high hands, he shows a shot fake, what's he have now? He has the whole lane to be able to work one on one with one of his guys. Everybody sees that, right? Okay, so he can shot fake and do that, that's another option for him. A third option is Clayton. Let's say somewhere this might happen, there was a switch, and on that switch, Clayton is now has Tony Phillips on him. Now he's going to establish post position. This is another great way in which to get the basketball into a high-low situation off of a screen. So the pass is made. He comes off screen, of it. Screen, screen. And let's say the isolate, boom, right here. Tony gets on top, right here. Now I go and cover Gary. Give the ball back to Gary. As you can see, wherever Clayton has Tony Phillips at, if Tony Phillips is able to completely try and recover on the cut to take that pass away, we now have Clayton Strunk right here using a wheel move in which he's going to put his foot in between Tony's legs right there. He's going to completely seal him off. And now we have one-on-one -on -one situation right here in the middle. So those are three ways in which you're coming off that screen and into the lane. Now we're going to show, we've already done the back side of the screen, now we're going to show if he tries to go over top of it. We're going to then back cut it. So Gary sets this, or makes a pass. He's going to set the screen, giving a verbal and also a physical sign. Now Tony's going to play up, right here, because he got burnt on that cut right here. So John's is going to come here, boom, he's going underneath of it, same thing. Could John go through here if Tony's denying? Can he use an arm sweep and get that arm out of the way and, learn, and get a good seal right here? Yes he can. Can he go fill out? Yes he can. Can he go set a screen, a back screen for Clayton? Yes, he can. And set a little flex cut. Can he receive a screen from Clayton? Yes, he can. It's all within the motion. Next thing is, how the defense is going to defend this. Now let's say we've gone through it two, three times, and they burn us on it, burn us on it. Now they start to switch. Pass is made to, get to Greg Cornish. Screen, screen. Okay, right here. Tony, we're switching. Switch, switch. Now what's going to happen on this? We've successfully covered this. John, go ahead and head back. Gary is going to do what is known either split the screen or slip the screen. That's here. Green, green, switch, green. switch it, switch it, switch it, switch it. I got John, I got John, I got John. Right there, as you can see, he's got it right there with the switch of the screen or the slip of the screen. These are things you'd break down in drill work to be able to do. 
Very good. Defense can step off now. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> now what we've had is we've had a pass and screen away situation, pass and cut. As I mentioned before, I'll just show this just randomly. Go ahead and make a pass, Gary. Go ahead and set a screen for John. John comes here. Now John is in the lane. John can then set a flex screen here, or you can set a flex screen there. Or, very good, that's perfectly fine. Or John can receive a screen. Go ahead and get John back here. Let's say John's a shooter. We got him with an end screen right here. Boom, right there. Danny's now on the block. Now he can go do something also. So with that, we have this action that has just happened. Does everybody see that? Now we're going to go over the different spots within the, uh, within the uh, screening series. So if I had the ball in the wing, didn't get anything. We're now right here. I will then take two steps in if I'm the guy on the wing. We'll take two steps in and then get an angle and set John an in screen right here. As you can see, his butt's the basket. My butt's at the basket, he comes off me here. I then go to turn and pin and look for a second. You look for the basketball there, and then I'm gonna fill out. To, I'm Greg, I'm sorry. Then I fill out to this spot right here. And you do one of those options, either come off the screen or just fill your spot, so on and so forth. Then you can make a basket cut. All right, very good. Now let's say the ball goes to the corner. I'm Greg, for right now. Clayton fills to the top, very good. I'm now Greg. I'm here. I'm then going to come and set an in screen right here on Clayton Strunk. Instead of, you, I should say in screen, but a UCLA screen right here. He's good, right here. I then roll back, put this guy on my butt, roll back to the ball, looking for a little jump shot, even right here at 15, 17 feet. Roll back, roll back. Okay, now John. John really has a kind of a hard angle to set this screen. But let's say it didn't happen, we're able to get the ball back here. He will then run what is known as an L cut, and I'll get to these options later, and then set a back screen right here for Danny. Boom, he comes off of it. Come off a tight here, Danny. Come on up for a second. Makes a, made the pass. I come up here, comes off it tight. Boom, right there. Put the guy on my butt, if I'm able to. Right there, jump shot. Now what I want you guys to do is this. I want you guys to either pass and make a, make a basket cut, or pass and screen away for a teammate. All right, go ahead and go through that, guys. Just five on zero. Good. Remember verbal. Want to call it out? Good. Good, Phil. Good, 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 Gary. Good, Gary. Call it out. Call it out. Make sure you get your tails to the baseline. Good. Roll back. Roll back. He's got somebody. He's got somebody. All right, he had a back cut. This guy was overplaning. Good job, Greg. Greg's a very smart player. Good. All right, that's fine. You come off a stagger. That's fine. John rolls back. Roll back. Good. Good. Back in, back in. Good. Okay, make a layup. Somebody can make a layup here. Okay, good. Okay, now what I want you guys to do is set two perimeter down, a down screen and a back screen out of that motion. Go ahead, 5 on 0, down screen or back screen out of it. Go ahead. Screen! Okay, good. He screens away. Good. Good. Okay. Good. Clay was going to go set that back screen for Greg. That's perfectly fine. He didn't see it was open. Go ahead, John. You're fine. Good. No. Good. Now go set a down screen for John. Go set it. John, go ahead and do it back down. All right. That's all right. That's all right. Keep cutting. Keep cutting. Keep cutting. Keep cutting. Pull the ball. Good. Clay, Clayton, go ahead and make a basket cut. Make, you made a basket cut. Danny, I want you to end screen for Clayton. Good. Right there. There's some good movement there. Okay. Everybody fills. Everybody fills. Good. Hard cut. Good. Good. Greg's open for the jump shot. Or, that's fine. That's fine. Gary's there. That's fine. It's all right. Thank you, guys. So as you can see, we've screened. We set in screens. We made the attempt to set a back screen. We've screened away. Now what we're going to work on, or we can get is, if our shooter, let's say it's half, or we need a score, call timeout. A real easy way in which this guy, he doesn't always have to screen this perimeter guy here or this perimeter guy here at all. He can also go and down screen. 
make a cut here, and I can set a screen right here for John Lewis. Here, comes, here he comes off a flex screen. Now Clayton recognizes that, and does Clayton have the option to set either a back screen or a down screen on me? He definitely does. Now we've run a little screen to screener. So I set that screen, come here Clay. Three, two, one, jump shot, knocked it in. We'll just imagine that. <laughs> so we have that movement also. So go ahead and run that. Go ahead. Screen right here, Danny, screen right here. He sets this, boom. Danny, he comes off the down screen. That can happen within the motion. That's the flex cut. As you can see, the offense has morphed. You can run basket cut, basket cut, and you might get a post up to a back screen, to a flex screen, to a down screen, and have that. It's a good, that's a really good look. Now we've added pass and cut. We've now added pass and screen away. We've now added pass and screen the screener. Now the next movement is how we're going to get the basketball in a pass and go to the ball situation. Anytime we have a pass and go to the ball situation, go ahead, Danny, actually go to uh, make a pass to Gary, please. He makes the pass to Gary. And making this pass to Gary, he's then going to go to the basketball. Now what I mean by go to the basketball is he's then going to take away vision by making a cut away. Now he's coming to the ball. A couple, a lot of things can happen, but let's say if I get the ball from Gary and I drive. Can I get some defenders out here? Just three guys would be perfectly fine. Guy on Greg, a guy on Gary, and Brad, it's good to see you, on Danny. Now, as you can see, Danny makes a pass and he's going to go to the ball. So he's going to take his guy away for a second. As you can see, Brett kind of turned his head a little bit because we're taking away vision. Very good. Now go to the ball. Now let's say Danny tries to drive it, try and drive in that. As you can see, there's a huge mess of white Wittenberg jerseys right here. He's not going to be doing very well. What, we're gonna, what we have to do is, whenever this corner guy, could be a guard, could be a forward, could be a center like Greg is, whenever we see this corner guy and he sees movement in which, let's say, Gary goes to the ball, he's got to immediately come into here and then run an L cut to completely isolate this side away. So come on up here, Greg. He's now taking help side away. Good job. Now he's taking help away. Now we can run some options off of this. Now we're going to show you these options. White can, sit, White can get off. Thank you, guys. Our first option in go to the ball. Danny makes a pass. As you said, he saw, you saw Brett's eyes and his head kind of move a little bit because we just took away vision, just took away help side vision. He now is going to go to the ball. The first movement is, let's say Gary catches the basketball a little bit in. Now Danny's a good three-point shooter. He's then going to receive a handoff in which Gary's going to then take the basketball and put it right on his hip, right here. And this serves as a screen for Danny. As if I was guarding Danny, I, was going, I would go underneath. He then gets it. I'm guarding him. He has an open jump shot. Doesn't need to dribble, just catch and shoots. That's the first movement is of this. So go ahead and get it, go ahead and pass to him. Set him up. Boom. I go underneath. Good jump shot right there. It's all right. Now think about it. Pass and cut, pass screen away, pass and pass, go to the ball. Jump shot. Could be open. You're varying your cuts up. You're hard to guard. So we had that movement. Second movement, if I could get two guys, two defenders now. Just two, one guy guard Gary, the other guy guard Danny. On this next movement is we saw Danny make a pass. Okay, take away vision. Okay, Gary now gives him the basketball here. Now let's say there's no jump shot at all. Nothing's taken. As you can see, Brett Cornette, right here, has now taken a spot in which he's attacking Danny Elon. On this take, Danny then wants to drive with his left hand, right here, and then Gary's going to set a little bit of a screen. He then hands the ball off, right here. Now as soon as this happens, he sees that, that Brett Cornette has taken a step out to try and attack him. Now as he does that, Danny, go off my left side. I then pin him right here, and I'm going to slip right to the basket. I have a layup. Well, Greg has now made his L cut, or he's already made his L cut out there on any movement up there. Now let's say, let's go ahead and do the same scenario. 
Gary comes up, he now takes his left right there. Now let's say Tony Phillips, as you can see, now comes up. We want to go away from Tony because he's the attacking side. Go ahead and attack Brett. Seal Tony. We now have a wide open layup and also we might even have an isolation post up there in which here, come here Tony. I'll be Gary, go ahead and do that one again. I'll play Gary's spot. It's here, boom, rips, there, he's there. I might have this right here in which I can post Tony up, get him on my back, and be able to score. So as you can see with Gary's size, and also might have a bit of a strength advantage than Tony here, might have this advantage, this is one way in which we can take advantage of Gary here and getting to the basket instead of having Gary have to handle the basketball, Gary having to put it down and trying to get, get to the dribble uh, penetration to the basket. So that's one way to take that away. Go ahead and do that one, guys. Go ahead and run your L-cut, Greg, good. Good job. Now over here on the back side, what are you guys constantly doing? Moving, Moving. Moving and also cutting and, cutting and screening. Let's say this happens on the back side. Go ahead and run it, guys. Go ahead and run that. Hand off. He attacks there. Attack opposite of who's high. OK, good. Right there. You can run a down screen here and also a violent cut. So let's say he goes down screens, John comes up here, you can post up. Very good. Ball goes to the top. You might have a duck in here, so on and so forth. Or, go ahead and get here, Clayton. You run that motion, let's say it gets back to Greg, go ahead and make a down, down screen. Right here, basket cut. Go ahead and fill that spot, John. Okay, you dig, you dig into me, go ahead and make the pass to John. Clayton's going to dig into me. Now he's got, he's got a basket, two points. Does everybody see that? So you got a basket cut, I mean you have options over there on that side. You just don't want to stand and watch what the heck is going on over there. You just don't want to stand there and, hey, that's pretty cool what they're doing. You got to stay within the flow of the offense also. So let's say we run through those options, those options. Now Brett's tired of getting beat. Come on back here, Danny. You're going to run your L cut again, Greg. Brett is extremely tired of getting beat. He's absolutely hating it. Go ahead and make your pass to Gary. As soon as he makes a pass to Gary, Danny then takes vision away, and now, Gre and now Brett is going to start to body him a little bit. So let me play Danny's spot. I then take my guy away. He's going to come up. He's, he's going to deny me completely of trying to get the basketball. We will then do this. Gary, you will then pivot. If I can play your spot for a second. Gary will then catch, and then he's going to then pivot on his, outs on his left foot and make an inside pivot or an outside pivot, and he's going to then get a handoff right here, and now I have hung up Brett on my side. Now you have a one-on-one -on -one attack right there. Go ahead and dribble. Now what has happened with this? I have now sealed, if I do a good job sealing Brett right here, I can then go to the basket, and now I have a layup. Does everybody see that? Go ahead and run through that one. Brett's going to now body him. Greg's going to still run his L cut. We'll get to him in a second. Good job, Greg. Nice, guys. Nice. Again, we have action back here. Good job, guys. Good job. Now, let's say we now have that action. That's really good. He bodies him all that. Tony, now as the defender, doesn't respect Gary's ability to shoot the basketball. So as the pass is made, Tony completely sags off of, of Gary. Greg makes his L cut. Very good, Greg. Now we're going to run what is known as an inside handoff, in which now we have Danny takes a step away, take away vision. He's now going to run a handoff right here. Now as you can see, if, if I'm sorry, let's have Brett guard me for a second. I'm sorry, no, stay right there, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Actually, go right there. Go to the elbow. Thank you, Greg. I make the pass. Gary, Gary, Gary. I now get the basketball. Now, Tony kind of sagged off me a little bit, but let's say he was up. What's going to happen now is Brett's now going to run into Tony. And then I might have a dribble penetration right here. Or, I take my step away, I come to it. Right here, I now I have how many guys guarding me? Two. Two. Right there, layup. 
So as you can see, all these things are great within motion. You put them through a couple screen, 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 and then you go to the ball and run an inside handoff after you're reading this. Or if the guy's hugging on you and botting you, not keeping you from the basketball, you can now do that. So when we go ahead, run, run a couple basket cuts and screens, and then Danny goes to the ball and let's see how these two defend you. Actually, just tell you two get back on top. Go ahead. Make a pass. Good, just basket cut. Good, you're fine, you're fine. We didn't go to the ball. You're fine. Good. Good. Good, he's right there, good. Good, right there. Right there. Good, okay, loop. Then have it, Gary's right here. Okay, go pass to Danny. Okay, go to the ball now, go to the ball now. John, run an L cut. Good, right there. Now, Gary would have jump shot there. Danny would then move. So on and so forth. But I think everybody at home understands what would happen within that offense. Does everybody understand that? Okay, very good, guys. Very good. Okay, that is our pass and go to the ball. Now, our last thing with that is Danny's right here. Is let's say Clayton, let's say all that was ran approximately within the three point line, in which we have good range, we have shooters that can do those things. Now, our next part is let's say Clayton's kind of up a little bit. And Clayton's a good driver. He can get to the basket. We can then make a pass here and then take away vision. And I'm going to come and I'm going to set a ball screen. Now on this ball screen, there's two things that this L guy can do. He can either stay right there and read it's a ball screen because I have my, my signal. And he's then going to go back to the perimeter because he can get involved in this. And it probably wouldn't be a good single ball screen because his guy's right there. So we can have a ball screen. Now when we set ball screens, a great way to do it, Tony defended that very well, a great way to do it is to rim run, is what they call in the NBA. So I set this screen here. Instead of doing the normal, he comes off of it, I try and roll and maybe even pin a little bit here. That's a little too slow, except for if you're doing those handoffs, it's an easy automatic seal and read like you guys saw. So what I'm going to do is rim run, is I set the ball screen here, and I'm going to do a little tap, and I'm going right to the basket as hard as I can. That forces the defense to have to make a major decision right off the bat. Am I going to make a hard cut? Am I going to stay with him? Am I going to stay on the ball? And so on and so forth. So that's another option that can come off of this going to the basketball. Go ahead and do that. And ball screen. Roll. Nice. 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 Good job. So you can see those are our options as going to the ball and setting a ball screen. Those are our options in basket cutting and also screening away. Our next movement is what was Greg was doing in this movement was he was running an L cut. L cuts can be ran from either Gary's spot or, or, Gary, or Greg's spot at any time. So let's say within the motion. Go ahead and make about two or three cuts, guys, and I'm going to stop you for a second. Cuts or screens? You get, I'm sorry, defense, defense, you guys can step off. Sorry guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Danny, go ahead and head to do is I want you guys to make a couple cuts, and we're then going to, now I'm going to then stop it, and then we're going to get an L cut, and how, and how to properly do this. Go ahead guys. One, John's going to fill it, John's going to fill it. Good. Good, we got a screen here for Greg. It's fine, just to be a little tighter, that's fine, that's fine. He, Clayton's going to look the post up. John's going to fill, John's going to fill, now he's going to fill over there. And stop! Danny Elm has just made a pass. Now he wants to come up at any time. He can then pass, cut, and then refill himself to that side. Or he can run an L cut. How he does this is he gives a visual signal here with a fist up in the air and also talk. L cut, L cut, L cut. He then comes right here to the high post or this vicinity right here. Does everybody see this? Come on up, Danny. When he comes up to this, to this L cut spot, this is also what is known as the pinch post position. And being in here in the pinch, po pinch post position, there's a lot of options that can happen. John now, let's say he makes a pass to Danny right here. A great way in which Danny is a guard. And if you guys see a lot of good players, this is a great way to put a lot of good players in a lot of good positions. He then makes an L cut 
Danny, and what also what is a good way, a good thing to teach is he's now going to inside pivot. The inside pivot is what he just what he just executed right there, for, especially from this spot, in which in one dribble he can get to the basket, and as close as you get to the basket, there's not many angles that he can take in which you can draw a foul. So he can then take his guy from there. He just came off ball screen. He just came off a down screen. He just set the back screen, and now he can come off this. And now he can run an L cut, get this guy behind him. Now he drives at me, gets to the basket and scores. This is for any option. So that's one option that can come off of this. Go ahead and do that one real quick, guys. Go make a pass. Okay, go ahead and run. I'm sorry, get it to Greg. All right. Go ahead and run L cut, Danny. L cut. You got to let everybody know. Okay, he's coming there. This will let everybody know. We now have a three man game situation going on here. What can happen over here? Same thing. Clayton can make a violent cut here and turn and seal his guy. Or he can set a back screen for Gary. Or he can receive a down screen. Okay, so go ahead and head back, guys. Okay, Greg, I want you to take one dribble over in order to get an angle right here. And I want you to enter it right to Danny. Good. Inside pivot. Take it to the rack. Good. As you can see, inside pivoting not only opens you up to create space, but it allows you to make, create, make good reads on the perimeter. Does everybody see that? Okay, go ahead and, and do that about two, three times, and then we're going to get Danny or get somebody isolated on an L cut. You guys call it. All right? You're going to pass and cut, pass screen away. Maybe even pass, go to the ball. Go ahead, guys. Good. You got a screen away. John comes to it. Okay, he wants to go set a down screen. That's fine. Good, Clay. Good, Clayton. Good, Clayton. Good, guys. Good. Hard cut. Good. Good. I just got to fill. Good. He's got a post. He had a backside look. I had a backside look. Good. L cut, Clayton. L cut, Clayton. L cut, L cut, L cut. L cut. Now he's right there. Good. And get it to him. That's fine. That's fine. We're just playing. Inside pivot. Take it to the rack. Okay, these guys have not gone through these things before, so it's perfectly fine that you know, they're kind of, your players will be the same way too, but once with proper drills, they'll be perfect at these things. So we can get on that L cut. Now let's say we have the same scenario. Clayton runs an L cut. He stays here. Now another scenario that we can have is John kind of, John dribbled over. Remember, we want to maintain 15 to 17 feet spacing, so Gary moves here. John then makes a pass here to the perimeter. Clayton is now at this high spot. Now if you guys are probably familiar with UCLA offense and so on and so forth, he can then set a back screen right here for John. John can then go to the block. Clayton can then pop out. Go ahead and give Clayton the basketball. John stay right there. Let's say John's right here. We have options here. Very good guys. Very good. Keep him moving steady. Gary can then set a down screen here. John can then set his man. And either get a jump shot, he can even curl that, so on and so forth. Gary can then post because Gary is a, Gary's a post player that we want on the block also. So he wants to get away from the perimeter and down screen. Okay, right there, good. If he doesn't get it, guess what you can do? You can fill there or you can go and run an L cut and get Clayton on the block. Very good. Now we have Clayton right here on the block. Go ahead and get the John. If this guy gets around him, go ahead and pass back to the top. Good. Seals right there. I'm done for. Done for. <laughs> that's right. It's all day. So as you can see, that's an effective movement of the L cut. So go ahead and run through. Let's go ahead and run through that and let's get a couple down screens out of that. Go ahead and get a couple passes, hard cuts, and let's get an L cut. Good. Good, you got a back screen. Nice, Clayton. Good, Phil. Nice, nice, nice. You can receive a down screen right there. Especially if that's a shooter, we want guys doing that. Good job, Clayton. Pass and cut. You're fine. You're fine. Good, he's right there. John, fill that spot. Very good. Gary to the top. He wants to use that. Good. L cut, L cut, L cut. We can get an L cut right here. Good. Pass to Clayton. Gets an angle. Back screen him. Good. Get to Dan. Good, we got a down screen. 
Now this is things within your motion. Oh, Dan, he's got the ball here. He, he's got the ball here. Go ahead and set it down screen for him. Good. Now these are things within motion. I mean, I'm just not, I don't call these things out as sets. These are just motion offensive plays. But you guys are doing a great job with it. Good job. Okay, another option out of the L cut is Danny now has the basketball. Clayton runs an L cut. Danny then gives to Clayton. All right. We can now scissors or X off of this. This is very hard to defend. If you can imagine, like I mentioned, screen away, screen away, pass and cut, pass and cut, got a post up, not there. Then we hit, the, hit him with this. Danny then takes this guy away. The first guy who made the pass is then going to come off the scissors right here. Go ahead and do that. Gary then will come off the second scissors cut. Now, let's say Gary's in the lane. What can happen with Gary? Gary can be screened, he can all that, so on and so forth. Or Danny just go ahead and fill up. You go ahead and fill up. What usually happens is, on a scissors cut, those guys X, if I'm guarding Clayton, go ahead and X again, go ahead and X again, guys. If I'm guarding Clayton right here, and there's a scissors right here, I'm probably gonna take a step back. That's gonna leave Clayton Strunk with an open jump shot, and or, oh shoot, I better not get beat. He's got me to the basket. So that also creates a lot of movement and a lot of confusion within, the, within that. So go ahead and just go ahead and make a couple passes and then L cut into a scissors. Go ahead, guys. Good. Good. Move. Just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Good, Phil, Greg, good. L cut, L cut. Nice, Danny. Nice, nice. Go ahead and get it to him. Go ahead and get it to him. Scissors off on Greg. First guy goes. Second guy goes. Okay, now we're still in it. We're still in it. You can still basket cut. You can still basket cut. This fill spots. If you get kind of out of whack, just go ahead and high and wide. Good. Now we're back in it. Good. Back screen, Clayton. Good. Back. Good. He got an L cut. Got an L cut. He's a set of shuffle screen. That's nice. Go ahead and hit him. Go ahead and hit him. Good. Good. Not bad, guys. Not bad. Good job. Let's go ahead and give John the ball. Is just in pass and cut. John's going to make a pass here. If you're a guy that's in the corner spot, you really don't have anywhere to fill except for put your head in the basket looking for it and then you immediately go back to that corner spot. On any of these basket cuts, on the, when we're passing and cutting, Danny will then make a basket cut like we mentioned. Go ahead and make your middle basket cut. Gary then fills to the top. John's been past the basketball. John will then throw to Clayton. Now when we throw the corner like we mentioned on the board, we wanted to throw the corner a lot so that this guy here, if I'm clogging up this lane, has to come up here and guard this so we can get a basket cut right here. So go ahead and cut John. Gary then fill. Greg will then fill to the top. Go ahead and make your pass. Now this guy here defensively, as soon as he makes his basket cut, go ahead and basket cut Clayton. This guy only has one area to go to and that's under the basket. He didn't have another place to fill to, so he will refill himself. Go ahead and refill yourself. Right over here to the corner. That covers all aspects of the cutting series and where these guys can cut to out of the, out of the top, the side, and the corner. Our next part is advanced techniques within the open post motion offense. Our first part is with the usage of the L cut, but coming from the back opposite side. So Greg Cornish makes a pass to Gary. John Lewis, go ahead and make your cut. We first want to make, when we make our cuts, we want to be able to make our basket cuts first and then set our L cuts. As soon as that happens, John Lewis sees an opportunity in which he can set an opposite side shuffle screen. So John, go ahead and fill John's spot. John then comes up here to the L, to the L spot or the side post and then sets a shuffle screen right here for Danny. Now he wants to communicate this in a certain way in which he's telling Danny what he's doing. L cut, L cut, L cut, L cut, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle right here, boom. He then comes, rolls back to the basketball, wiping his nose, wiping his defender's nose, taking it to the basket. Okay, go ahead and run through that motion quick, real quick. Go ahead. Good, L cut, L cut. L cut, L cut. Shuffle, 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 opposite, good. Right there. And we have a two-on-one situation which Danny can then post. All right. Now getting into also some other more advanced techniques. 
we're now going to go through combo screening. Combo screening is, set, is one guy, we've seen a little bit of it, in which a guy screened away and then set a down screen, but also different screens that can be set within the motion, but it, it's one guy setting that screen. Usually they lead to a ball screen. So go ahead and give the ball back to Danny at the top. He then screens away, for, or passes to John. His first screen he sets is, he wants to go set a screen for Gary. So go ahead and set your screen for Gary. Screen, screen. Good, he curls back. Now seeing that Gary is not open, or he comes up here and he doesn't have an opening, let's say they're able to hug him, they're able to deny him the basketball right here, he then comes over and sets a ball screen for John. Go ahead and fill up, Gary go ahead and fill out. Screen, he sets his ball screen right here. That screen is very hard to guard. A ball going right to a ball screen. His defender, if you watch me here, go ahead and head back to your spots, guys. His defender passes me to John. He goes over here, hops off. He goes and screens away. Now I've got to go and help and recover on this. He goes, comes to the top, or if I'm able to come up here and hug him, and then he's got to come up and set a ball screen. How we defend this? I'm coming clear from here in the back side of the post, or in the paint, or even hugging him like I showed, to come up here and try and guard this. That's very, very hard to difficult because I'm trying to guard two screens. Go ahead and run through that, guys. Go ahead. Pass the screen one. Boom. Good. Good, there's a combo screen, so on and so forth. We got that right there. Very good. Very good. Another, t another combo screen is this. Go ahead and Danny, come on up. We'll just show these from the top spot. But these can be ran from either Gary's position or even John's position. Danny has the basketball. He's now going to go set a ball screen. Go ahead and make the pass. Set a ball screen. Greg, doesn't, Greg sees it, but he sees it's a ball screen, so he stays within his corner spot. Goes back. Good. Danny is now going to go set a, sets the ball screen. Go ahead and set your ball screen. Now let's say Greg Cornish is a heck of a shooter, which he is. For how big he is, he shot the ball very well from three point, the three-point line. John then drives. Danny then comes and sets a down screen for Greg, in which Greg Thanks, sets Greg. his guy up. Come on in here, Greg. He sets him up. Boom. Go ahead and come off of it. Right there, first shot. So there's another combo ball screen, or a combo from a ball screen to a down screen. Screen away, ball screen. Then you can go into a ball screen, down screen. Go ahead and run through that one. Good pass. He runs to go to the ball. Down screen. Good. Comes in the lane. Right there. Catch and shoot. Very good. Very good. All right. Another advanced technique is the usage of the dribble and also going, of guys going back door and also dribble handoffs. Dribble handoffs are effective against zone offenses and also dribbling a guy at a guy and taking him back door. Now one of the things, let's say we're going to use over here, we'll use Danny and John again. If I'm guarding John Lewis and let's say I've been assigned by my coach or whoever, whoever facing, whoever controls us, to face guard John Lewis. Do not let him have the basketball, just completely deny him. What we can do is we can run a nice dribble handoff to get John Lewis the basketball. So go ahead and dribble at him. Now John's got to do something here. If I'm like this, I'm not going to really let him have it. If he stands there, I'm doing a pretty good job. But as John started to do is he started to walk me or V-cut me down. I stay right here. Go ahead, Danny. And Danny then runs a hip roll right here, and that's going to peg me completely off. And then John can then get to the basket and score. That's the first movement. The second read is this. If I'm playing good, correct defensive position, I'm in the online upline, I have my hand out here, I'm denying the basketball, I'm keeping both vision of my volume man, and let's say Danny dribbles at me. This is another way in which we can get a good back cut if motion's standing around, if guys are standing, people are denying. He dribbles at me, go ahead and back cut. He back cuts, Danny will then keep his dribble, so he just dribbles at, let's go over here, back to this Danny, go ahead and back up, back up. Okay, he's going to dribble at him, keep your dribble. I step, now keeping his dribble, he's going to throw a pass, one bounce off the dribble, into, right into Danny. 
It is humanly impossible for a human being, it doesn't matter if it's LeBron James to myself, I know, big comparison. <laughs> it, is not, it is not as, as it's, it's humanly impossible that if Danny dribbles at me, that I can lunge here, and if he throws a good bounce pass right past my ankle, for me to be able to get that low and that far down to go and get it. It's humanly impossible. Now, maybe LeBron could get it. He's 6'9", pretty athletic, but I don't know. So if Danny comes at me, and let's say I'm hugging John, hug, 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 good, he's going to come off, I'm sorry, he's going to then come out, you're right, I'm hugging, you're going to come off that dribble handoff right there, go and score. If Danny is then, go ahead and dribble at John, here, I then turn my head because he has to dribble at me, right there for a score. Also, think about zone offense. And I'll go through a zone offense and how we run it through this. Think about how many times. Go ahead and dribble over. Kate, we're in zone. So this is, a, this is a top guard. Go ahead and basket cut. Stick your head under the basket. Now what can happen? He's in the lane. He can either set a screen or receive a screen. Let's say at the bottom side of a 2-3 zone. I'll go through more zone offense here later. John's a shooter. Dribbles at him. Set an end screen for me, Greg, right there. Boom. Boom, there's a nice little corner jump shot against the zone using open post motion offense principles. These guys over here, same thing. Also, this corner guy can be a screener. He could be a flare screener up here, running an L cut. Also on the back side, continue doing what, what, what um, L cuts can do. He can set screens. If his guy's in the lane and we have that action going on right there, you're fully invited to come and sit right on his tail. We're using his help side against him, especially when we get a quick reversal or a skip pass across. All right, see so if you guys can go ahead and run a couple of passes and then dribble at somebody and go back door. Good, Phil, John, all right, he wants to go set a screen. Good, Phil. Okay, we had a back screen, that's fine, that's fine. It happens. Good, he dribbles at him. Hand off, there. Good screen, that's excellent, Danny. Good job, good job. Give yourself a round of applause. Good job, guys. Okay, our next usage. Now that we have the dribble handoff, so on and so forth, we can now bring the L cut guy in. Now let's say Danny dribbles and gives John a good handoff. This guy now, the L cut guy, can now come into play and, and be a part of this situation. So Greg comes and runs his L cut. He can then, he, Dan, let's see, go ahead and go ahead back, guys. Go ahead and head back. All right. He dribbles at him. Great corners come up here and set a ball screen on John Lewis. We have one screen. We have two screens right here for John Lewis. Boom, boom. All right. Then you play. Go ahead, guys. Good. Screen. Good, got Danny rolling. Good. Within this offense, I've shown you a lot of different variations, and there's a couple more I still want to get into uh, of, off, the, um, off the L cuts. But it's one thing to know is as a whole team, it's hard to do all these different things. You have to develop a lot of it from your youth peewee leagues all the way to your middle school teams, then to your high school teams, and then maybe they'll carry on these tools to a varsity level. But all these guys have, re that have or all these things I've taught these guys so far tonight has been tools they can use to, against, any, against any defense, which we'll get into a little bit later, but also tools to play the game of basketball. Everything from a back cut to reading screens to reading the defense to knowing what to do next, what to, uh, what to accomplish next, and what is the next step to be able to do that. Okay, last one, guys, is we're going to run staggered screens, and then we're going to go to zone offense. Off a staggered screen, we can either do it in two ways. We can run staggered screens to get a guy a shooter, or we can do a staggered screen to get a guy off staggered ball screens. You've already seen one with our L-cut guy. Our L-cut guy who comes up, and just you're going to play a normal game with him, the L-cut guy coming up here and doing that, and you saw a kind of a handoff to a staggered ball screen. Also, elbow ball screens to add more to the L cut. 
the elbow ball screens are very, very hard to diff and very difficult to, to defend because they're set so close to the basket. If you watch the NBA, they set a lot of elbow ball screens, especially at angles in which instead of setting it the traditional way in which our tails are to the baseline side, they angle their ball screens a lot in which so that the dribble is coming a straight line at the basket. You can do that in anywhere here, here in this offense such as if Danny has the basketball, anybody can go screen for him. They want to set a ball screen, go to the ball. They want to angle their tails so that the, they're setting towards the basket. Come here, Gary. So that they're to the basket. Go ahead, Danny. And his first dribble is attacking the basket. Instead of attacking, if Gary sets a traditional way, go ahead and set your baseline, there you go. Sets his traditional, Danny's first dribble, as you can see, is towards the baseline. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a, st a couple staggered ball screens with out of, this, out of the open post. How it can be set is in two ways. Danny goes ahead and makes a pass to John. Greg wants to run his L cut, which is perfectly fine. Go ahead and run an L cut right here. Danny then sees that Greg Cornish is going to set a ball screen. He comes out of it here. And instead of Danny going through here, and making a cut, he can then see a ball screen, Greg set one, he can come across and get involved with this ball screen right here. Attack the basket. On any ball screen though, on any ball screen though, when you, there's movement happening there, you guys are doing exactly what you're told, you're doing a great job with it. When there's, all, when there's ball screens being set with staggers, these guys want to spot up because he might have dribble penetrate, their guys might help here, they come fly at me, shooter in the corner, boom three ball right there. All right, so go ahead and let's run through that scenario. These ball screens, just for, for time purposes, here's the staggered screen away. This is a staggered screen, but they can also be ran from this side. Go ahead, guys. Pass, Greg runs his L cut. Good, 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 now we're in it. Clay, Clayton's got, oh! That's all right. He's, he's a post player. He'd be more in the lane. So with that, we have a staggered screen being set this way, in which we had the L cut to there. Now, we're going to set another staggered screen, another way to set a staggered screen. Go ahead and pass to John. John's our slasher. Greg, go ahead and runs his L cut. Calls out L cut, L cut. Danny sees this, and he just makes a basket cut. Gary can now come across and set this staggered screen right here. Go ahead and fill Danny right there. Now you're coming off of this screen right here, boom. Gary will then come and clean it up right from there. Another way to set the, or that read of a staggered ball screen, Danny Gunn makes his pass. He cuts. Greg makes an L cut. Calls out L cut, L cut, L cut. He's then going to set the ball screen. Here's another staggered ball screen. If he wants to pop, he can then rim run off this ball screen. He can then pick and pop. And we can isolate you in the post right here. But for time's sakes, as we showed earlier, we can't really do that right now. All right. So we have that right there. He picks and pops and, and flashes that way. Also, if, Gray, if they run it again, go ahead and run that staggered again. Up three, up three, up three. Good, right there, right there. Is if he rolls, let's say if Greg, I'm sorry, if Greg rolls now, go ahead and roll Greg. You will then pick and then you'll pop so we can get spacing here if Greg wants to take his guy in, violent cut, and get a post up here off that ball screen, he perfectly can. Ball screens are another great way to get nice isolation post ups right here in the lane. So off that staggered screen, we just ran staggered, off of staggered ball screens, we've ran L cuts, we've ran, zit, we've ran X's, so on and so forth. And with running these different things, these guys are now very hard to defend. One thing is, as a coach, do you take your zone offense and your man offense and combine them together? Well, this teaches a great way in which you can teach younger kids how to play not only against man-to-man -man defenses and be very hard to guard, and also against zone defenses, and you're using the same cuts, the same principles, same everything against it. Can I please get five defenders? I'll be that fifth defender. Get some defensive guys, get them working here. Go ahead and get into a 2-3 zone, guys. You're in the middle, Tim. All right, 2-3. Just 2-3 right here. I'll play a wing, no problem. 
Alright, now what we see here is we ran through all this motion, they've now gone to a 2-3 zone. Within this 2-3 zone, there's gaps, as you can see, and I think in all 2-3 zones there's tons of gaps. In any zone there's gaps. There's a gap here, we have a gap here, we now have a gap well, where I'm standing at here, but where Gary's at, we have a gap and we have a gap here. Can I please have the corner guys grab your X's and bring them right here to the short corner. Now as you can see within this we have corner guy, corner guy and we have gaps. We now have moved the X spots to a short corner area or a gray area that's very hard to defend. Zone offense and how we run zone offense is the same thing. Dribble penetrate the gaps. Go ahead and dribble pen penetrate the gap, John. Okay, you two stop him. That's going to open these two guys up right here. Dribble penetrate the gaps. Go ahead and back up. Another thing we can do, dribble at somebody. So go ahead and dribble at somebody. That's going to freeze him, kick to Clayton for a shot right there. That might cause confusion between the bottom side of the zone and the top side of the zone. That's, a, that's the second thing we, we run motion offense against. Now if you remember our rules, we pass and cut, we can pass and screen away, or we can set a ball screen. Now how we set, now how we set these, or how we do these cuts is this. John Lewis, make a pass to Clayton Strunk. John Lewis not just wants to put his hand up and just cut right into the basket because if he cuts right to the basket, guess who's waiting on him? Mr. Dusty Watson. Waiting on him right there. So what's going to happen is this. Whenever these guys cut, they want to cut where the defense is not. So John Lewis makes a cut and now he wants to do what is known as a hook right here. Go ahead and pass me the ball. Now remember, if you want to catch, if you catch the basketball here on this inside, you want to in, then inside pivot and look opposite because what's going to happen to the zone? They're all going to be looking at me. You might have options. Great corners come to the basket. You might have him for a lob or he might seal me on the back side. I know I'm not there right now. He might seal me for the lob. I might have here, boom, boom right there. And or this, go ahead and chase him Tony, go ahead and chase him Tony, right here. I might be able to sit in here, right here, everybody collapse. Somebody would fill in there and fill there, good, okay. That's the first part. But let's say John Lewis is not open. Go ahead and make the pass to Clayton. Cut where they're not. The guy that's normally open is the second cutter. The second cutter is Gary. Gary then makes his cut. He has to read this backside guy. Where, is it? Where am I playing him at? Where am I playing him at? Where am I playing him at? Greg has decided, or I'm sorry, Brett Cornett has decided to sink into the lane. That is no problem. John, go ahead and cut through. He, he didn't get it, but everybody has to respect that cutter. Now, Brett is playing here. I'm then going to step here, like as, like as if he was playing that reversal spot. Greg then fills. John is in there. Now, let's see what happens with this. Gary takes my spot. I'm now going to play the bottom side of the zone, of the 2-3 zone. Clayton, did you just make a pass? Yes. Very good, sir. He comes right here. If there's nothing there, okay, right there, go ahead and fill Danny. All right, Clayton doesn't get it. He then fills out to the short corner. Go ahead and make a pass here. Now, as you can see, if there's a quick reversal for a second, it depends how quick I am and how quick the top guy is. For that second, we have double teamed the basketball. John Lewis, shooter right there, boom, might have a jump shot right here, right there. Let's say that's not there. We also have to respect Gary's right here in the line. So I might have here, I might be shading shooter here, Gary gets, might be open right here. So that splits that part of the zone and then Danny's going to come in. Look what he might have. Go ahead, and, go ahead and fill out Gary. Clayton, go ahead and rotate to the top. See how far, I'm sorry, name? Oh, Brandon. 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 Thank you, Brandon. See how far Brandon sunk into the lane? He might have a jump shot right there, coming to this lane right here but he has to read this backside guy. Another big thing against zones is we highly encourage backside cuts. Backside cuts. So go ahead and we've already sent two guys through. Go ahead and cut through. Cut through Danny. Okay, here comes Clayton. He's the backside cutter. Backside cutter. Go ahead and pass the ball to Clayton. Go ahead and reverse it. Greg, Greg made a pass first, so he should be cutting first. Okay, cut through the lane, cut through the lane, good. Backside cut's coming. Okay, rotate through, rotate through. 
All right, Danny's, go ahead, and, I'm sorry, let's move that X a little bit more. That's a little too far underneath. There you go. Danny might have the ball right there. Good. Go ahead and fill John. Fill the spot. Fill up. Fill up. Okay, good. If he wants to, let's say Brett does do that. Let's say Brett does come up. Can you make a basket cut anytime you want? Absolutely. Siri so comes in the lane right there. Might have that right there. Okay, go ahead and back up, guys. Okay, when we, once we get the premise of the zone offense, that everybody can make a pass and cut, everybody can make a pass and get into the lane, now we're going to start making things here. We're going to make a pass. I make a cut right here. Let's say, Dan, let's say we reverse it quickly to Danny. All right. Let's say for that second, Tony had to bump. So Tony, come on up. Okay, right here for that quick second. Okay, right there, get it to Danny. I've already made my cut. Dusty, Dusty Watson had to go there and help out just for a second, just for a quick second. Actually, get, get right where that X is. Dusty has to help out for a quick second because it's a quick reversal. Go ahead and pass back to Gary so everybody at home can see this here. All right, pass is made. Tony has to bump up for a second. Take a step up, Tony. Good, right there. Guess who's open right here in this lane? But Dusty's not going to completely play it, but he's got to play two guys now. So I'm going to be open in this lane. Whenever the ball goes to the wing, we should have a backside. We should have one cutter going through. Whether or not the second cutter will come through, the second option is ball goes to the corner. Right here, we dive right here for the basket. Right here, I would be on that backside. Now let's say if Brett, can you get right here? Yeah. If Brett was playing my spot, I'm right here. Brett's playing my spot. We forget. They always forget about the corner guy right there for a layup. So you want to send two cutters through the lane. Another option that can come out of zone offense, L cuts are very, very effective against zone offense. Go ahead and Greg and Danny, run L cuts right now. Okay, these guys run double L cuts right to the top. Now the defense kind of has to have a little bit of a problem. These guys in both man and zone, is they want to be screeners. They can set flare screens also. They can do a lot of things. They can even set ball screens right here. Look what Greg Cornish just did. He flashed an L cut, ball screen the top guy of the zone. He drilled penetrates. I've got to help. We have a kick for a jump shot right here, or he'd probably be out a little bit more. But I had to dribble up and I had to help. L cuts are phenomenal against zones because the biggest thing is they're coming from the back side of the zone. Go ahead and head back to your corner spots, guys. They're coming from the back side. So go ahead and L cut. L cut, L cut, L cut, L cut, L cut. Okay, cutter, 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 right there. Okay, you might have that. Let's say Brett Cornett comes off of that. Go ahead and give the ball back to John. Let's say Brett gets over top of it. Go ahead and get over top of it, Brett. Great corner spot up for the ball. Right there. Boom. Now we have things, now we have things available. We have that right there. You have frozen this guy right here. Now you've put Tony Phillips on a two-on-one island. Short corner there, Danny right there. Go ahead and get there. Boom, what have we got here? Boom. You might be able to cut right here, find a gut. You might be having that. And I know I'm not on that back side, but I think everybody at home, I think you guys can kind of visualize this guy coming through here and diving, finding the basket. Now another big thing, or a coaching point on the L cuts. Go ahead and L cut again, guys. You guys are doing a great job with it. Okay, here comes L cut, L cut, L cut. Okay, right here, go ahead and make a pass to the wing, John. Okay, Brett Cornett has to come out here and guard this. This guy has to come out here and bump. You guys can keep that in your mind. If you come up here, you can solve a lot of problems, especially L cut guys, if you sit your butt right on this guy right here. You can, what, you, what happens is if I try and sit here, he might be able to come over and might be able to pop the basketball away. This guy also might be able to defend if you get the ball, might be able to defend you, Greg. But if you get this guy right on your tail, go ahead and get the ball to Clayton. Go ahead and get this guy right on your tail, right here. Boom, catch it, Greg. Okay, now on this side, now you're going to uh, outside pivot instead of inside pivot. Now look where you're at, right there. What do we want against the zone? Anybody cutting from the short corner or the back side? Very good. Gary, he's now caught the basketball right there. We can, might have two cutters. Dusty, you're the middle guy, correct? Actually, let's do this so we, er, so we can use Tony. Go ahead and give the ball to Danny. Okay, Danny has sit on this guy. He sat on this guy right here. Actually, Brandon, go ahead and guard him. Brett's this guy right here. He now has this. 
what we can have and what we encourage. Guys coming from the back side. This is Dusty Watson. He's in the lane. I'm a big guy. He's got the ball here. What's wrong with sitting in on this guy right here in the zone? Right there. Gary's a shooter. He might flare right there. He's got the basketball right there. They're concerned. Of, actually, Danny, go ahead and head back to there. Sorry. L cut. There's that right there. Here's this. Here's a duck in. Guess what might be happening? You might have a spot up there. Come here, Greg. Here, Greg, take my spot here. Now I'm over here now. You, might have, you have now isolated. You have a, this post up, but let's say we're worried about it. Tony's worried about it. I'm worried about it. There, there's that there. Or you have a two-on-one over here. Let's see you get the clay. I got to come out here. Boom. Now we might have a shooter. We might have somebody be able to cut. You pass. Cut through. Good fill. Okay, good fill. Might have a second cutter coming from the top. You guys want to come, you guys want to come directly towards the ball. All right, fill to the top, Greg. Good, go where they're not, go where they're not, good, pass to the top. Okay, now what you've seen is this is just the basic movement of a zone off, of the five out versus the zone. Now we're going to throw in a couple wrinkles of it that are going to give us some good shots that are used in a lot of quick hitters that you guys see at home that either Michigan State runs against the zone or Ohio State. Some zone quick hitters that you can run out of this, but you're doing it within the flow of the motion. Go ahead and John, go ahead and get back to Greg. Now we've worked on a couple things, and I've, and I've kind of emphasized a couple things. Dribble at somebody, they basket cut, and what can you do for them? Screen for them. John, dribble at Danny. Danny, back cut. Back cut. Stick your head under the basket. Gary, in screen for Tony. In screen on Tony. Danny, go right there. You might have a jump shot right there. Boom. Another option. I, I did fail to mention this within the, within the usage of the L cuts. Also, go ahead and run that same action again on that back side. Danny, go ahead and dribble at him. Stick your head under the basket to get a good, good angle right here. Boom. Hold it. Tony, as you can see, is trying to fight over the top. There is officially a gap open right here. Brett's right here. I just come in. I just sit right on Brett. You can run off any of those down screens. as what you guys saw. You can now run a screen, and now I immediately can run an L cut right here. Catch the basketball. Brett's right here. I didn't catch right here. Boom. Backside's going to be wide open, completely wide open, especially how much the zone. So anytime any guy sets a down screen, they immediately can come and run an L cut. Let's say, just for perimeter purposes, going to get the ball back to Danny. All right. Let's say John basket cuts. Gary, set an in screen for John, or on Tony. John, go underneath this. Good. Let's say Gary's, I'm, uh, I'm, okay, I'm an okay post player, but he's better at the high post shooting a little jump shot. Right here, I know this is against the zone, but it's also against man. He might be able to get a jump shot here, or if White went to man, he might be able to down screen, come here, catch, find backside, and also dribble penetrate. So anytime off a of down screen, you guys can do that. Okay, Danny, back to the top. Very good. So L cuts, cuts from the weak side, screening is now important. This also can be ran against man or zone. And this is all, like I said, just drill it up in your, in your drills, and you'll be good against it. Danny, go ahead and make a pass to the wing. Now within the motion, you can either pass, let's say Danny goes and sets a ball screen right there, he sets his ball screen, freeze, Clayton is now open off of this, jump shot. So there's pass and screen away. Go ahead and get the ball back to John, you guys can stay in your spots right there. At any time, anybody can screen within this motion. John, go ahead and set, pass there. A great screening angle and a great screen is to set a screen right here on the plug guy of the 2-3 zone. So he makes a pass, John, go to where they're not. Okay, then immediately I want you to go screen Dusty Watson. You need to call some, then let's sing, send a second cutter through. Okay, this guy's responsibility, Brandon, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Danny, go yep. up. Go, okay. He's playing low, so you want to pop up. Brandon's responsibility will be right here in the zone. Let's say John wants to go get Gary a screen. He comes through, Gary, Gary, Gary. He screens, screens Dusty, you're fine. Here he comes underneath. I'm sorry, Greg, go ahead and pass the scooter out a little bit more. Sorry. We need to move this back. About right there. 
I have to now worry. He screens. Let's say this is a shooter. You might be able to slip something through here and get a layup. All right? So that's a good way to set a screen. You can also set screens on the back side. Go ahead and run through that again. Go ahead and run through that. Okay, pass. Good. Go right here. Boom. Gary screens. I have back side open right there. Fills. He fills. Fill spots. Clayton cut. Clayton cut. Good. Cut through. Fill the top. Cutters. 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 Okay, you guys can now cut through and screen somebody. Cut through and good job, Greg. Cut through and screen somebody. Cut through and screen somebody. Good. Now open up, Clayton. Hold on, hold on. That was a perfect scenario. Give the ball back to Gary. Okay, Clayton came through here, saw the cut, and then now he was going to set a screen. He set a screen right here on Tony. It was perfectly fine. But let's say Greg ran an L cut. He flashes right here. Dustin, you have to be kind of aware of this, don't you? You set that screen perfectly. Exactly. He can now set a screen and instead of rolling to the outside, he can now set it to the inside. You might have a lob back, back to the back. Go ahead and just lob it up. And a score. You might have that. All right. You guys got that? Okay, go ahead and run through that one more time. Get some passing and screening. Then I'm going to show one more. Then we're going to switch the zone up. Go ahead, guys. Good. Bump. Bump, recover, good. Make sure you guys are cut, cut calling cutters, calling cutters. Screen, screen. Good, 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 good. <laughs> good. Okay, it's not there, it's not there. Screen. Good. Good. Nice, Clayton. Nice flare screen, Clayton. Good. Good, right here. Good, I got corner, got corner, got corner. Good, good flare. Jump shot, nail, nice, good job, good job offense, good job offense, good job. Now you can see within your traditional zone offenses, coaches, think about it at home. A lot of zone offenses, we have 15, we have six foot seven, six foot eight post players trying to shoot 15 foot jump shots looking for each other. If you've got those type of guys, that's great, good for you. If not, <laughs> if not, Sometimes it's nice to have a shooter, a guy that might be able to fill up the three, but a shooter come through here, if they're played back, he's open in the lane, get a nice jump shot right in here. They respect it. You've got this here, you've got this here. You have options to cut through this. White, I want you guys now to go to a 1-3-1 one, one zone. 1-3-1. One, one. Tony, um, go ahead and be the baseline runner. A 1-3-1 one, one against, against a five out. You can get in this in two ways. You can stay in your five out and go through the same cuts that, we, that we're doing. L cuts are very good at this. Go ahead and L cut, Danny. Go ahead and L cut, Greg. L cut. Good. On the inside wing, I've got to respect this. What if this is a guy, he's down there on the three point line and he's not very good as a shooter. But here, he's a good 15 foot shooter in the scouting report. I've got to respect this. Uh oh, I've got John Lewis. He just buried a three. He might hit three, four, five more. I'm here trying to guard this. Take this away. They got him. You can either get into your offense as having a double L cut, as, as what you guys just saw, or go ahead and stay in your five out. A lot of coaches like to get into a two guard front. Perfectly fine. What I'd like for you to do, Gary, since you're going to play point guard right now, is actually, Gary, can you take that spot right there on the zone? Gary's going to take that bottom side. I'm playing point. Remember guys, we want a lot of motion as soon as I bring the ball down, right? Point guards, we want motion. So I come here, let's say I dribble at Clay. Where's, what's Clayton do? I dribble at you. He's going to make an L cut right there, here, boom, come to the top. We've now separated into a two guard front. Tony's a baseline runner. I've got this, I got my dribble. On any dribble, you can freeze two guys. So I'm dri dri I've got these two guys froze, in screen Tony. He just came in the lane right there, boom, turn and post Greg. Right there, He's the, you might have that, or also if I can play Greg, Greg take my spot right there, he did an excellent screen. He screened, Tony goes and chases, here's the middle guy of the zone, he might be flushered here, I can just step right over top. Now I got the basketball right here and I got him on my back. Zone's defeated in a matter of three seconds. So that's another way. Or you can stay in the traditional way that we just did it, five out, making cuts, 
making L cuts and reads. So once you guys read, you guys go ahead and run through that. L cuts and just flash through the lane. If we need to stop it and make a point, we'll stop and make a point. Go ahead, guys. Just cut and go where they're not. All right, that's fine, that's fine. Good. Good, if he wants to do that, that's fine. I got ball up top, ball up top, ball up top. Good, if you guys want to do that, you don't have to dribble it the whole time. Good. Good, it's open in the corner, dribble penetrate. Good cut, great cut. Go ahead and run through that again, guys. Just pass and cut. Got here, we're here, we're here. Lane, laned it, laned it, laned it. Got it, passing lane, passing lane, good. Good, dead, dead. Good, one more, you got an up, oh, good. Good. Oh. Almost. I'll finish it. Good job. As you can see, great corners, great screen. Pass, cut, screen away. We have pass screen, you guys have seen against the zone, pass screen, ball screen. Pass, cut through, dives to the basket. Post ups, down screens, in screens. You've seen all this against the zone. Have we guys, if I can ask the offense, have we changed anything that I've taught you in the past hour? No. Nothing. We have not changed our zone offense and our man offense. Would you guys get confused at all, you think? No. Probably not. These are things that have been taught younger, age, middle-aged, older, that these guys are good at it. They've been drilled at it. They're junior high coaches. They're peewee coaches. They're varsity coaches getting after them about it. It's the same stuff. Nothing's changed, has it? Okay, let's make things real difficult. Triangle and two. <laughs> Tony, can you please guard Gary? He's a shooter. I'll play the bottom end of the zone. Brandon, can you guard John Lewis? Brett's going to play the top. He's going to play right there. Okay, we're triangle in two and Very good. Our two guys we're going to triangle. We're going to get John Lewis. We're going to get Gary. Gary's a shooter. So, we want to keep these guys out of this, out the balls out of their hand. Okay, go ahead. Just pass, cut, do the things that I just taught you guys. We've got L cuts. L cuts are very susceptible to this. Good. That's, yeah, you're denying him. Good. Nice seal. Nice seal. Good cut, Danny. That was a good cut. It's a good cut. It's all right. One more time. Triangle and two. Get some movement. Good. Those guys can go set screens. Good guys. Good guys. Good. Good. Deny, deny, deny. There he is. Got here, got here. Help. Nice. Nice. She can see. Just ran a triangle and two. This works great against a box and one. Dribble at somebody, you can down screen him, come off the screen, set a flex screen, all that, guys. We, let me ask the offense again, have we changed anything we've done? No. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. We've not changed anything except that we are playing team basketball and we're, we're working on a lot of things and, and collecting those fundamentals of everything we've done. This concludes our DVD on the, on the open post motion offense. As you can see, we've ran against a man, we've ran against zone. These guys have now installed in this past hour, hour and a half, tools that they need in order to play the game of basketball. In order to play with a back cut, posting up, screening away, screening and going to the ball, and running options off of that. The biggest key to it is read the defense and attack. Thank you for watching our presentation on the open post motion offense. If you have any questions or need clarification, you can please contact me here at Bethel Local Schools or through Wittenberg University at www.wittenberg.edu. Thank you.